All right, here we are again. I'm gonna try to jump back in. Uh, if I can remember where I just left off. Uh, so we were talking about um, <clears throat> the Great Schism. We we're talking about the, the the disembodiment of the the beheading, um, in which the mind kind of gets trapped in its own its own symbol set. It's a, a reality of its own creation, and loses that that communion ability that ability to continually to keep sensing uh, to keep taking input and senses from the body from the context from the environment um, and and remaining aware and open and agile to to all the things that that change in life and to be careful not to get stuck and crusty in our APS um, which which um, inevitably uh, causes pain when when uh, when change becomes uh, overwhelming or becomes obvious, so it, it um, things may work for a while, but uh, but become uh, maybe annoyances or like little pains. Um, but after too long of t of staying stuck in one in one way, um, it definitely uh, almost doesn't matter what what part of life it it will it will bite, it will sting, it'll hurt, it'll cause pain. Um, and so, so what are we doing? Um, what are we doing when we when we study uh, the externalization of meaning, uh, the birth of the problem of meaning in the axial age? What are we doing by studying it? Uh, we have to be careful not to uh, get swept away by the same neurosis uh, that that has uh, captured uh, the the world. Um, we have to be sure that that, uh, uh, and th this is a, a tough challenge because there is a necessity for articulation uh, in order to to uh, to try and uh, see if other people understand or, or work to increase the the awareness of others around. Um, there's there's this this problem of being an island uh, when you when you awaken when you first uh, uh, reach communion with your body. Um, that there's this this desire, this will to, to spread out and to, um, to, to, uh, to, to enact, to enact and embody this meaning, this new, this new uh, potential of, of, uh, of, of communion, of, of, uh, of being in touch with the body. Uh, it, it right away uh, uh, becomes shown to us and known to us we can we can see that all around us is is the old dead ways and even the people are still dead uh, following their 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 crusty symbol sets and navigating at a, at a participant level uh, so we have to be careful to not get trapped up in this neurosis even though even though it's necessary to to try and uh, and this is the process this is going from membership to mastery so right away our work is cut out for us how do we explain this to others how do we express it um, and the, in fact, the ability to uh, to express this and to uh, to have have your expressions to be uh, mimetically selected, to, so that your behaviors uh, and this this new way of being and uh, of embodiment uh, become selected by others. So, in other words, those around you become start start to clue in that that there's more to this life than than what seems, and and that their suffering uh, has has cause. And that we can we can see where this pain is coming from, and it's so often uh, coming from our, our own clinging, our own clinging so hard to to the way that we think think that things are, clinging so hard to our expectations. And so we have to be careful when we investigate the the problem of meaning, and and the great axial war, its causes and its its ongoing effects. We have to be careful to uh, to make sure that what we're doing. Uh, is in in a, in a healthy healthy way in a healthy context uh, that that we listen to the body that we ourselves are are are, are taking care of of the the natural areas of concern um, ba basic at a, at a basic level to give it an example that we are um, that we are uh, feeding ourselves well nu nutrition that we are uh, getting rest uh, getting to bed on time um, that we are 
uh, uh, cleaning ourselves, taking a shower, bath, brushing our teeth, uh, so taking care of hygiene, um, and uh, and f as well as exercise, fitness. Um, so just a, a few examples uh, on the more fundamental end of, of what it means to, to take care of the areas of, of concern, uh, which naturally arise and present themselves uh, in context uh, from the body. And, and it's important that whatever we're doing uh, have, have that, that, uh, that sense of wheels hitting the ground and not simply spinning, um, but the rubber meeting the road, so to speak. Um, and, and so when, when those all around you uh, don't know, or, or most of the people around you don't know what, what this means and your behavior seems weird and strange, um, there is this kind of... Uh, um, very uh, difficult to to avoid uh, sort of um, a condition that 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 the people around you are stuck in the mind and they're stuck in neurosis and stuck in ideology and so therefore how to reach them out outside of that um, so of course um, we can present an example of what's different we can we can open up uh, break break ice and open up dramas and and do all kinds of crazy stuff but of course um, if we're causing pain and suffering around us even even if it's for good even if we can perceive that it's for the good of the others that they deal with this pain they may simply not want to they may not realize that this is a in fact a, a process uh, a healthy process that that um, that the old crust should be lifted up and see the watch the bugs scatter uh, from under that crust um, and people will, will resist and, and so of course there's this natural uh, tendency to want to go back into that neurosis to try and figure out what happened to me why why am I different than everybody else um, and and so that's that's a process that I went through um, uh, many years of, of really what 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 appeared to be nothing happening at all just uh, sitting at a computer of course I was I was writing all kinds of activity uh, processing uh, processing my experience over time, and 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 there the, maybe there is kind of a, a hermit type type aspect or normally that we can normally expect uh, to allow people uh, that they need to kind of integrate this experience and, and there's really a lot of communication that has to go on uh, in within the body itself between the mind and the body to heal what's happened. Um, but again, we we want to. Uh, Hopefully, as as uh, as our processes become um, more coherent, and as we're able to work together, uh, we'll be able to find um, very very healthy ways, and we'll be able to openly acknowledge that this kind of stuff happens, and uh, in uh, and and facilitate our experimentation for finding uh, better ways of 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 uh, of increasing the coherence of of society at large. Uh, which is, a, a, of course, codependently arising with the behavior and the culture of the individuals. Um, so this is kind of the major problem that uh, to change your, to change the world, as it said, you have to change yourself. And of course, so we've gone through this 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 major, massive, life-changing uh, um, alteration of our reality and our being and our identity. Everything it's all changed. And then so so now we know the true meaning of that statement, and yet yet we want to share that with others we want to now go out into the world and um, and and of course it's it's not going to be very welcome at this point to be told well you have to change yourself self has already changed big time and um, now what do we do about the world right so it's not that there's there's this ever ever going ongoing helplessness about about the world not not being able to change but um, by sharing this this wave of, of healing, by by taking part in it, in actively and and actively um, exemplifying that behavior and and uh, and sharing resources and and skills of of how to how to bring people back to life. And so we have uh, protocols some that that I've identified. Uh, for example, the linchpin protocol. Um, so what we're doing here is we're 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 we're, um, 
we're trying to we're trying to line up the the concrete layer. We're we're trying to create an object in our mind in our, our neural operating system. We're pulling up a concrete object. We're filling that with uh, with ab abstract. Uh, so so codependently, we are we are pulling up an abstract an abstraction of an uh, of a of a type a type of object. Uh, this abstraction is coming at us concretely as an object, an object that is a type object. And here we are, we are gaining, uh, gaining isomorphism along uh, in our in our current ongoing perception as we go and build this. And uh, and then what what this does is is finally we are filling that. Um, we are we are then finally gaining access to the region of the APS, which takes care of of the dynamics between the concrete and the abstract itself. So in other words, we're getting into the mimetic. And, and this, is, this is where we see the flow, the flow and the dynamic between uh, the abstract and the concrete. Um, this is what I believe, uh, so like Plato and his cave and all that, I don't think that Plato's idealized forms uh, ever, went, ever, ever went so far into the, uh, the phenomenology. I, I could be wrong there, but, but I think that, that, this, that the Plato forms were um, ultimately left off as a neurosis. Um, and a, a, a dichotomy, uh, um, if you will, in other words, saying that the tra no, it's not the material that's real, it's the transcendent, these, these idealized objects, that's the real reality. And so again, you're kind of missing the point, you're being uh, polarized, uh, you're, you're, the mind is, is being uh, utilized in a way that sends it off in, in a polarized direction. Uh, so saying now that it's the transcendent is what's real and, and the invisible is real and the visible is merely a, an illusion. Um, so what the linchpin protocol does is set up that, uh, that experiment so that within your APS you, you're able to illuminate the, the section or the area and if it doesn't exist it's going to be created. Um, the, this is the self-referential knowledge of the, the 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 content of the APS matching the form of the APS, um, and and what we have here is an ability to track the flow, so the flow between the concrete and the abstract, um, and and again that's the mimetic layer. So so we see the mimetic layer moving and, and taking on its its life, and so how we do this is uh, so that's that's the constraint we need to see that happening. And then, uh, so protocols to take care of this, uh, one of which is, uh, first off, to select an object that's not triggering in a whole bunch of ways, something that's not controversial, something that everyone is familiar with. Uh, so this is the reason why we would take breath as the object of, of focus, of meditation. And then, as I described earlier, we, we say, what is, what is the breath in and of itself? Uh, we, we take that, that um, Socratic pursuit to to find out what is the ideal of this and so of course so this is bringing up the type the type object in within our, our concrete perception um, and then we're we're saying what what is the what is breath in it in and of itself and we allow this to unfold and that unfolding what we are seeing what we are witnessing there is the mimetic um, the mimetic uh, uh, back and forth the the um, the the flow between the abstract and concrete. So, um, essentially, so another way of looking at this is the only way that we know what a thing is, such as breath, is through our, our compilation of our of our history of experiences with that. So, any time ever in the past that we've ever thought about uh, what is breath, or thought about breathing, or or like um, holding our breath under water, uh, things that we've encountered, or or being short of breath and having to breathe fast. Or, or, or breathing a whole bunch and then getting lightheaded, um, or, or having the sensation of, of lungs opening and, and blowing out air or blowing out candles. Um, all these are little fraction pieces of experience uh, which is being tied together um, to form, to, th this is the basis of our APS, this is where the APS comes from, is by the alignment of these narratives, of these stories, uh, along the axis of that of that particular type, that type of thing. <clears throat> so the so this is the reason for the for the for our pursuits in in Portal Mountain. Um, this is this is one of the ways one example of, of how we 
Um, we are actively dealing with and engaging this problem of meaning uh, uh, in a way that actually does that that does something that uh, um, uh, in a way that's functional. So, so th this this protocol can be used in context of uh, proximity guilds, in which you are actively discipling and and trying to uh, help people to raise or increase their coherence, to help them on their path. Of, on their journey of, of increasing coherence, um, and of course we have we have protocols like the coherence protocol for facilitating that that understanding of of the of the relationship of of uh, of the of uh, of I guess the the, the APS and, and its mind processes the relationship of that with with the body. Um, just as we've as we've demonstrated and illuminated with the the linchpin protocol here. So, so here we have um, so this the hyperstition of Portal Mountain. Uh, this is the this is the the mimetic unfolding, the mimetic selection. Um, through the through the mountain range, um, one at a time via via relationships. Um, just we're we're seeing um, we're seeing the pillar of light from the top of the mountain. Uh, we're seeing it shine up. It, it's going up to the heavens, and and the the mountain is a is a reflection of you of yourself. Uh, the mountain is a reflection of your 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 mind and body. Um, and and so the the hyperstition uh, depends on 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 a on a a, a current a concrete uh, embodiment of of a model. So this is the standard model of mimetics. Uh, we are taking that and embodying it, and and what it gives us through time is a future where our coherence is increased not only of ourselves of one individual but of, of, of potentially the whole society um, this is the pursuit of religion and um, and truly it, it seems that we we need a an, a total uh, outward acknowledgement of the meta religion um, and and again at any 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 ex, ex, uh, any example or any any uh, Attempt at religion that that denies the meta narrative, um, uh, any attempted expression at, at any symbol set that denies the meta narrative or the meta religion. Um, here you have a rigid system which is bound to fail, and and it may not. Of course, it's not it's not the fault of that symbol set. It's the fault of the participant who is who is trying to run that a, as a rigid program. And uh, as we're exploring here, life is simply not like that. <clears throat> and um, not only that, but but the truth truth cannot be expressed. Um, truth can be can be known in inside, but it cannot be expressed because there is always the problem of of meaning, the problem of interpretation. Uh, so. So all that we, we end up having is, is not just cold, dead cold knowledge and scripture, but, but we have a, an unfolding um, a mimetic medicine, which is, which is rolling, rolling through the culture. Um, we, are, we are seeing uh, um, vast changes in culture right now that, 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 are, not, that are not being captured. Like the, the reason for their behavior is not, is not well being captured. Um, for example, when I awakened five years ago, I had no idea what happened to me. It was so it was years of wandering and and struggling for for some way of of, uh, of expressing it and, and figuring out what happened to me. Um, if I had a model, if I had a good a good symbol set to uh, to compare with my experience, I would I would have been um, much much more easy easily integrated um, to what happened. Um, but. But I didn't know who, who or what to trust, and uh, so I had to do the process on my own uh, with, with very little help, but just, just navigating what, what's out there. So that's, that's what, what makes a hyperstition is, 
is a, a current embodiment of a model which which uh, um, a mod so the embodiment of a model which which um, which brings which is which codependently arises that that current embodiment codependently arises with with its own future um, perfected state um, so so we're talking about uh, the kingdom of heaven on earth uh, we're talking about the guild manifest um, these things happen when we when we take uh, a cer certain model of behavior which is isomorphic um, and and embody it and act it out so this is the way that the future comes towards us because that that idealistic state uh, though it never exists as as such um, th this is sort of how the the forms the 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 ideal uh, forms can come to us from the future because uh, where else have have they been have they uh, where else has this knowledge come except from outside of time itself um, so the that, that's why the the ideal is timeless um, it has it's nowhere and no place um, and and when we embody that that model the isomorphic model um, we're actually we're it's like uh, pulling a technology out of the future and and coming back into the past and then implementing it um, So the meta narrative, the meta religion, uh, is something that has existed before, even before any kind of organized religion. Um, <clears throat> what the the meta religion? We're we're simply talking about the fact of this this communion between mind and body, uh, this communion between um, self and God, um, yourself and the universe. Uh, probably a bunch of different ways you could interpret that self and other so the meta narrative the meta uh, the meta religion um, it's always it always was it always was the same it never changes Um, it's sort of like uh, this idealized um, uh, perfection of, of life, perfection of our life. So I'm thinking I might leave it at that. It's getting pretty late. Um, just gonna spend uh, spend some time with my wife and relax for the rest of the night. It's already after nine o'clock, anyways. So um, I think that that's pretty good. I think I've transitioned here from from uh, talking about the church in general to uh, to the meta narrative, which I wanted to get into, and then I'm gonna link this into. Uh, more concretely into the Great Axial War. I'm going to give uh, just give some context of uh, give some narratives of of uh, how I believe that this this uh, or my view on this this transition. Um, some nuances there. Uh, for example, I I think that that we certainly did have this this problem of externalization of meaning. Uh, as soon as we spoke language, it, that, that is technically an externalization. And we always had this tendency of getting stuck uh, in this reality, in this meaning, uh, which, which society can kind of 
uh, somehow can 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 place on us as we're being raised, and of course, then there's that generational thing where uh, where certain traditions uh, keep getting replicated over and over again. The traditions, and in this sort of way, we have a uh, a reality, a shared reality of of a, of a community that just keeps getting re replayed over and over again, coming from. Uh, yes, coming from the the individuals themselves, but in a sense also coming from something higher, from from outside in in a sort of way. Um, just in, in point in how I uh, point to this uh, the tradition aspect of it, um, that that certain meanings and and processes get get kind of a, take a, on a life of their own in the external. And this this was always happening even in uh, during times of oral tradition where there was no uh, no no written um, there there may have been some symbolic form some basic symbolism uh, able to to externalize or or um, shared shared sort of meanings uh, that could be interpreted out of who knows uh, painting or whatever uh, painting symbols um, so but so even even though there was that there was that danger of externalization and that that the that the culture the community itself uh, can kind of overbear on the individual. Um, I believe in in a lot, if not most cases, um, the the culture did did try to so via uh, shamanistic techniques uh, did try to to peel the individual out of the crust of this this uh, generative regenerative uh, generational traditional uh, culture. And did did have to peel them out of that, so that they became uh, uh, in in a communion with God, and so that they could start to to uh, to see the context of their culture and see how they were raised up, and then start to potentially improve things around them, and not 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 listen to the way things are uh, dogmatically and and again so a, a participant level uh, society because when we have participant level society, unless there's a lot of uh, I think externalization and scaffolding to to uh, to specialize to have specializations in all different kinds of things uh, in all different kinds of behaviors and skills to to keep society going uh, in the cases where a society is much smaller, I think it was probably much more important that that each that each individual be be awakened to their own context and and to to be expected to take on uh, the the the, the challenges of life that, that just come at you, um, they're always the unexpected. So this would be the, the benefit is to um, to be thinking outside of the box and and to to utilize this ability as a as a dynamic means of of uh, communing with with nature and of, of exploring and making things better and uh, making better culture and, and finding out and discovering things. Um, I think that this spirit was definitely ad advantageous, if not necessary, to smaller uh, tribal-type uh, oral traditional communities. Um, and then, so yeah, that that even though this externalization was happening, it was not until the uh, the alphabet, as well as um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so as soon as as soon as um, as soon as words could could speak to us out of out of letter, out of the letters, uh, out of out of symbols written out on externalized media, as soon as it could speak to us as if it had a, a mouth and a voice box, um, this this is what this is what allowed that 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 uh, community uh, or that um, that generational uh, traditional type of. Uh, type of um, force if you will uh, to kind of really take on a life of its own uh, because it it reinforced its own meaning it reinforced itself and things became much more harder to overturn or change and so you had this the shaman shaman class who um, oh I probably I don't know I, I don't know if I want to get into any kind of um, specifics on the history, or just um, let it be known or acknowledged that uh, the way that I the way that I present this is not not meant to be an exact um, archaeological type fact, historical fact. Um, 
so you had this priest class emerging from wherever it did and um, and uh, due to so you had a, a literate a literate class so this would be the highest uh, is able to interact with these symbols um, and to read from it and uh, and so maybe the most so this is already a mediation um, most of the majority of the people in the culture do not have access to be able to read these books and such and so eventually you have this uh, this control it's the, the control also reinforcing itself so such like how the externalized symbol the externalized media reinforced the meaning of that symbol set within itself uh, we also had this this um, this advantage of literacy um, separating and mediating the tribe from from uh, from life itself and and so that 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 became a, a leverage point of power you had this priest class emerging uh, which could which could sort of uh, rule over and govern govern people and, and had this special access to God um, and anyways I'll, I'll get into that more later and uh, right now I'm just uh, just gonna call it a night and I continue to ponder on this on where I can go with that next um, just to, to quickly um, uh, dump off my mind if I if I have anything left uh, so so we got the meta narrative into alphabetica and then I wanted to get into sots uh, so I've already been describing a lot of the the, dyna the dynamic between the uh, spectacle and the abstract phase space and I'm using these words uh, in the in the technical in the model sense so when I say spectacle I'm not talking about the spectacle with a capital S um, that that is what we more refer to as this unmoored breakaway civilization um, in what I'm saying when I say the word spectacle I'm simply talking about the, the concrete counterpart to the uh, the abstract of the APS um, and so the dynamic between those two and I'm definitely going to get into the cognitive discrepancy and uh, and how that um, how we can look we can use the triad protocol to uh, to jump between two different uh, sort of views of the neurological operating system um, the natural view is to to feel like your concrete is actually in the shared um, so in other words the this smooth feeling of reality that things are real um, that 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 stories and that things happen to us in a smooth manner uh, this is hiding the fact that it's actually just a bunch of objects. If you're looking at it phenomenologically, uh, you're you're seeing, uh, let's say, an object which represents uh, a, a previous state of something, then an object that's representing a later state of something, and then an object to relate these things and to notice the change between them. So this is an example of how we see uh, if we blink. Well, before we saw things, and, and then our eyes closed, and then and this this feels like this changed very smoothly for us but in, in fact we're simply taking uh, stock of the state the sort of state these changed states and what it's like to be in different states and uh, so anyways the, the the triad protocol we can utilize that to show how this this window this window of perception a, a triad window of perception has been shifted up and this is evolutionarily ad advantageous um, because uh, we don't uh, uh, interacting in our environment it we don't need to be concerned with how the how the mimetic layer is working with with this dynamic between abstract and concrete uh, we simply need to be presented with this smooth fluid reality so that we don't get distracted and we get the the most surface sort of narratives the stories of what's happening to us our feeling of our place in that in that reality and so th this is kind of a, a detail of so this this natural uh, this natural ability uh, to perceive reality in a very smooth way. We call it the cognitive discrepancy window. It can shift up or down. When we shift it down, that's an example of the uh, how we utilize the linchpin protocol to illuminate that. Um, so uh, so we, 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 we shift our, our perceptive window down, down a layer and and um, so I want to go into a bit more details about how this how this becomes exploited um, to make things to to manipulate our our reality and our sense of real to manipulate our, our flow of, of facts and events and stuff happening um, 
by by exploiting the 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 abstract phase space and the parts in which we share in common and, and which as a society we have we have been uh, ham had things hammered into us like for example certain truths about for example our country or our religion being the best one ever and uh, and and somebody of another country or another religion is the enemy so this is an example of a rigid a rigid uh, um, a projection of real of of reality, a projection of the APS onto reality, which is being triggered by media broadcast to to cause a to, and known to cause a reaction that uh, if the enemy is is doing something and and uh, and it's considered a threat, and then we know we know the red lines, our our media puppet masters know which red line, uh, so to speak, know which red lines uh, that that we can cross. Like for example, if somebody shoots a bullet towards us or towards one of our soldiers or troop or something like that or somebody is killed then we know that that something has crossed the line and something is going to happen and and we are given along with this news we are we are presented with the reality we are enforced with the reality that that it is in fact the enemy that has that has hurt us and therefore we must support a, a war an assault an attack we must support a counterattack against the enemy and so this is just a, a quick a uh, quick and dirty example of of how computational propaganda works and and interfaces with us. This is how all how pretty much advertisement works, and it's it's so often um, uh, uh, being being intertwined into the identity into our to our identity uh, where we feel like we're uh, we're not complete until we have this product or that product, or if we're not looking our best, we have to buy this product or that surgery or, or whatever. Um, just, just uh, so advertisement, advertisement interfaces with our, with our APS in the very same way. So exploiting that cognitive discrepancy window, and and using known sets of uh, of meaning, known known regions of meaning which are supposed to be shared uh, within a culture, um, and this is how we are brought up and programmed. Uh, that that we should have all of these same expectations and and we have this is how we have tribes tribalism uh, us versus them all this kind of simplistic uh, simplistic super simplistic um, interactions with reality whereby we simply are projecting onto it and we are not being at all sensitive into the realities uh, for example that that everyone uh, that most people in the world simply want peace uh, otherwise, they're possessed by greed and other and hatred and other other kinds of things that they that they could say they want destruction and other whatever. Um, but the vast majority of people want peace, are peaceful, and um, whoever you think is your enemy, um, you would love them as as your as your brother if you knew them. And this is true for for most for the vast majority of the population in relation to each other. Is that we would we would love each other as brothers and as sisters if we only knew each other but we don't again we are projecting our reality and we are being caused and triggered to project our the reality um, via mass media broadcasting and 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 it's like and this is this is the whole basis of politics to make a left-right decision um, I'll probably get into that more I can't remember if I did um, just about the the absolute simplicity and and just total uh, um, desolation of of politics and, and of the mind engaged in politics. How how far off from reality it is, and the whole puppet show, uh, which which has to be portrayed. That the only job of a politician to um, to translate between the the deep state, the dark state, um, and and what what we believe is is real what we believe the way the world is that the, that's the job of the politician uh, is to kind of mediate that and to apologize and 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 leave office and be replaced by another if and when that 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 the state needs to take uh, to uh, to signal some sort of remorse or repentance of course things go on as they do unchanging because in the hearts of man uh, we have not changed and we have no way of knowing even that our expectations are so simplistic and so overly uh, uh, simplified that, that, they, that it could never be reality. And this is the nature of the APS. Uh, this is always the danger. 
Uh, it never is reality and we must always be open to that communion uh, between the mind and the body uh, in order that we, that we do not um, abuse our, our amazing privilege and our position um, as, as navigators and masters of reality.